Hi everyone, my name is Anissa Oberoi. I'm a prosthetics and special effects makeup artist. Today's video is going to be all about how to create burns. I'm going to be showing you two methods of how to do it. One is going to be a bit more of an extreme burn and one is going to be a slightly more subtle one. For both of these methods, you're going to need liquid latex. Um, this, you can get this on Amazon, you can get this. This one is from Cryolin Professional Makeup. Uh, you can order it online but there's lots of brands, the brand doesn't really matter. You're also going to need a sponge. Now you can use these latex wedges that you can also get on Amazon or you could just use a regular kitchen sponge that you can get but just make sure that it's clean and you can cut it into smaller sizes. The most important thing to check before you do any of this is to see if you are allergic to liquid latex or latex in general. If you are allergic to latex, if you know this already, then don't apply it to your body or your face. If you don't know, what you can do is take a little dot of it and put it here on the inside of the arm and just leave that there for a day and see if it starts getting irritated because if it does, then you shouldn't be using it. So I'm going to do different methods on different sides of my face. On this side, I'm going to do the first method, which is just liquid latex with a sponge. And on this side, I'm going to be doing liquid latex sponge and tissue paper. So I put my hair back because liquid latex when it gets in hair it starts pulling on the hair and then to take it out it's very painful so definitely avoid your eyebrows if you have a beard don't put it in your beard just put it on the skin areas so i've just poured some latex into this plastic container i'm just going to take my sponge and dip it into this wipe off a little bit of the excess and just stipple this where you want the bone to be i'm just doing this freehand but if you want it to be in a specific area, then you should probably take a light eyeliner pencil or something like that and just mark out the area where you want the bone to be. And this will also help you with continuity so that if you're doing multiple performances, you can have the same kind of bone every time. Mine is actually dried quite fast, but if you want to speed it up, you can always use a hair dryer and definitely put it on the cool setting. Don't hold it too close to your face and hold it at distance. So you'll know when the liquid latex has dried because it goes clear when it dries. It's white when it goes on but it's clear when it dries. Once that's dry, I'm gonna go in again with the sponge. Just do another layer on top of that same area that I did before and it doesn't have to be neat again it can be a little rough now I'm gonna do my final layer you can do more than three if you think that your layers are already quite thin but I think three layers is gonna be okay for this one so once that last layer is dry it should look something like this it should still be shiny and much shinier than the rest of your skin. So now what we're gonna do is create that burnt peel back effect where the raw skin is in the middle and the regular skin is peeling around it. So what I'm gonna do is grab the center and pull. I'm just trying to make a little hole in that. So you can see this little hole inside. I'm gonna peel this back almost all the way to the edge of where I've applied the latex so it looks like the skin inside here is the part that's been burnt and is now peeling off so just gently peel that back so I've removed a little bit here and over here I've just removed the entire piece completely because you don't want it to look like a perfect circle you don't want it to be very uniform so i have removed a little bit over here now for coloring i'm going to take this blush palette that i have you can use blush you can use grease paint you can use any foundations lipstick anything but you want it to be a bit of a pinky tone i'm actually going to use this sponge here but you can use a brush and i'm going to take this pink tone and place that inside the areas, inside the peeled areas.
and then for the inside it's always a little bit darker right inside so i'm taking this purple it's a maroonish color So I'm going to keep layering this on until I'm happy with them. So this is the final bond. It did turn out to be a little bit circular which is why I say just draw on an outline before you start doing this. Uh, but this is a bond that would be used to show maybe a bad sunburn or if uh, you've dropped water on yourself, hot water on yourself or something like that. So for the severe bond, I'm going to do it. And now instead of drying it with a hair dryer, I'm going to take this tissue and I'm going to separate it. So I'm going to really really thin tissue and then bare little bits so that they fit into this shape. Now I've got that in place, I'm going to take the liquid latex and go over that tissue. Now this isn't going to go as clear as the last one because this has tissue on top of it which is white. Uh, but I'm going to do two more layers of the latex and then the tissue on top of it and then we'll start with the actual bone process. So again on this side I'm going to start pulling out areas but instead of doing one giant area and pulling that out to the edges, I'm going to pick smaller holes in many places. If you want you can use nail scissors to just cut off these excess bits but if you're doing that be very careful because you don't want to cut yourself. And I'm going to be taking my foundation on a brush and just blending that those edges. So now to fill in these inside bits, again I'm going to use this palette uh, and I'm using that same pink shade to fill in just the inside of those holes. Now I'm taking a bigger brush and I'm going to dip into that pink again and also a slight brown color and I'm going to go over the whole thing. So now I'm taking this red grease paint, uh, you can use a lipstick if you want to, just be sure to powder it after and I'm just going underneath edges of those flaps. And I'm going to use this brown shade. You can use an eyeliner, you can even use black if you want to. And I'm going to focus it to where the latex and the skin meet.
and I'm going to dip that brush into the brown and a little bit of the red and just brush that lightly over the whole board. Now if you want this to look like an electrical burn, if someone's been struck by lightning or if they've had a shock and that's why their face is burned or any part of their body, you want that charred look. So you should take a black eyeshadow. I'm using this one. It's just a matte black eyeshadow. Dipping my brush into it. going over this whole thing, very lightly, just so that you get the texture of that latex and you also get that charred effect. And with this, I would probably go in with this red again and fill in these bits because it's going to be a very bloody burn if it is an electrical burn. These are all things that you should be researching before you actually start doing your burn is what caused it, real life image reference pictures, how would it look when it actually happened, what colors should you use. So these are all things that you should be taking into consideration before you actually start. So on this side of my face, I have a slightly milder burn which is created just using liquid latex. And on this side of my face, I have a more severe burn which is created using liquid latex and tissue. Once again, the most important thing before you start making your burns is to find out how the burn happened, research real life pictures of those burns so that you can make the most realistic burn possible. And also don't be afraid of coloring things to the point where they become slightly unrealistic because for theater, again, you're gonna have people at a great distance from you.